In this video, I'm going to show you my workflow and process to animate this subtle character animation all in After Effects. Let's begin. This animation is done in collab with Adrian Hamasia, an incredible French illustrator who creates work with such a brilliant, minimal and consistent style, I was very lucky to animate one of his pieces. Now the direction of the animation changed a bit through the process after some feedback from Adrian, but I thought it would be really valuable to show that process of me problem solving and adapting to changes, because that is the reality of this industry. So I started with an illustrator file that Adrian had sent to me, all beautifully separated into layers, which makes it much easier. And then the only thing I really changed to this was to remove the roughen. Adrian had added a roughen in Illustrator, and I wanted to turn that off because I wanted to animate this sort of gritty boil, and that's gonna be easy to do in After Effects over the top of the whole animation. So to turn those off, I just had the appearance panel open and then untick the visibility for roughen and did that for all the visible lines. And then I imported it into After Effects. All the layers are separated down here in the timeline and the next thing to do is organize it. Here I color coded each layer by adjusting it down here and then parented some layers to others using the pick whip. So I parented hand two, which is this hand up here, to the left arm here. So that way when I rotate the arm, the hand comes with it. And then I started my first animation pass, which is the blocking. And here's what our blocking looks like. And now you can probably guess what didn't make it into the final animation. Our character's arm ripping off. Now we'll get to how I address that feedback soon, but at this stage I was just animating the essential elements to get across the story. The stretch, and then the arm ripping off. So I'm making keyframes on only two layers here. We're animating the main rotation of the body, and we're also animating the rotation and the position of the arm. And I'm animating using hold keyframes. If you see a keyframe that looks like a square, or a square with a pointy left edge, that is a hold keyframe. And what a hold keyframe does is holds the value until another keyframe approaches. It won't ease into that, and it won't add any motion or tweening between that. So here on the body, its rotation is at minus 10, and if we go forward, it continues at minus 10 till it hits this next keyframe, which is plus five, where it shifts over to the right and then holds that until we go back to minus 15, where it stretches over to the left even more. Now to create hold keyframes or switch between hold and regular keyframes, you can press Control and Alt on your keyboard and then click on any keyframe. And let's change all of these to regular keyframes to see how that would look. And we get the smooth motion that keyframes give, but that's not what we want. So let's undo those. And the reason I find it really important to animate with hold keyframes at the beginning is because we don't want to get focused too much on the details. It's going to be too much for us to worry about the easing and the, the minutia of the timing of this animation. We just want to think about the big picture and make sure each layer is in the right position for each of the sort of important poses in the animation. And spending the time to get your timing right in the blocking is going to save you a ton of time later on when you're just focusing on the easing and you can get really detailed in the graph editor and you don't have to think about the overall flow of the animation because you've already sorted that out. Now the next stage was for me to add some extra details to the blocking. So what that was is this stump to the shoulder here, which Adrian of course did not draw. And then I rounded out the you know, shoulder joint of the actual detached arm as well. And here, even though we're just blocking in the simpler shape with some rotations, it's already come a lot of the way towards the final piece. The next stage was adding the easing. And you can see I've added a keyframe here on either side of the hold keyframes and then adjusted all of these in the graph editor. If we go into the graph editor, we can see the path of the motion curve here. Let's view this a little larger. At the start, it starts to lean to the right and I've got this small bump in our graph editor here because as it leans to the right, it leans just a tiny bit more, a little bit quicker before it's released back to the left. And this is just a bit of anticipation to show our character giving it all her strength to push a little bit further and then flying back a bit. And then again, drawing back some energy as it leans left and then very quickly easing to the right continuing this process and moving a bit more to the left and a bit more to the right each time until the arm flies off here and then we return back to the start of the loop. And this is where I spend time in the nitty gritty of the graph editor, just tweaking things subtly and not worrying about the other elements because they're already sorted out in our blocking phase. And this was the time where I wanted to address the frame rate as well. So this is currently playing at 24 frames per second now this looks way too smooth and digital for my taste, and I think a lower frame rate would be much better suited to this animation. So I added an adjustment layer, and then added the effect posterize time, and set that to 12 frames per second. So now we're only seeing half the frames, and this feels more like what a traditional animation on twos would feel like, and this definitely suits the vibe of this illustration better. The next stage was to add some easing on the arm. It's a lot more subtle than the body, the arm doesn't rotate too much. And I also animated some slight rotation on the hand as well, which is probably even subtler. The next stage was to add some secondary motion, and that was to the head and the hair. So the secondary motion or secondary animation is animation that reacts to the main animation. So if we solo our hair back and our head, 
you can see that as the head is pushed forward by the body, so the hair has a slight delayed reaction from the head. And that's all done with the rotation keyframes. So after the head is rotated down to the right, the hair swings to the right as well, but very shortly after it. Then I animated the secondary motion on the legs. Let's take a look at the left leg. I've parented the upper and lower legs so I can rotate them and they still stay attached. And I wanted these legs to move kind of against the motion of the body. So when the body moves to the right, the legs move to the left, as if they're trying to keep balance. And I did this after a fair bit of practice recreating this motion by myself. And don't be shy about recreating motions on characters with your own body, because then you're going to figure out what subtle motions and maybe the direction you thought the legs would bend might be the opposite to what you thought. And you're only going to discover that by either watching some really specific reference or just acting it out quickly yourself. So I can tell you I was very limber by the end of this animation. And luckily my arm remained attached throughout. I also added some subtle animation to the foot as well. So this foot here moves across the ground slightly as the lower leg is being pulled further away from it. For the leg on the right I animated this motion with a shape path. So I essentially drew a rectangle, toggle down here and on rectangle path we can right click convert to bezier path and now we can add some more bezier points. So I added two in the middle where the knee was, keyframe that path while they were down and then a few frames later moved up the middle ones so it looked like the knee was lifting and also push the right edge of the leg to the left a bit as well. Otherwise, it would look like the leg was getting longer as the knee lifted. There's probably a way to figure out exactly how short this leg should be when the knee raises this high up using Pythagoras, but I could not be bothered to figure that out. So it's very fine to eyeball these things. And then we were almost done. I added this little cross to the arm stump here because I thought it looked kind of like, the, you know, the end of a hot dog. And I also added that animated roughen look to the edges of the lines. Now I did that by adding another adjustment layer and adding a turbulent displace effect. Now I use this a lot in my animations to get a slightly gritty look, like maybe this is all drawn with hand and there's some variance in the lines. Let's hide this effect and I'll show you how I normally do it. I add a turbulent displace effect and here it looks really wonky. So let's turn the size down to three. That's starting to look a bit more like what we want and change the amount down as well. Here I've got it at 12. And if we toggle that on and off, we can see there's just a slight little bumpiness to the lines here. And to animate it so it looks like it was drawn new every few frames, we're going to toggle down evolution options, alt click the stopwatch on random seed and add the effect time times four. So that will generate a new random seed every four frames. So the bumps are slightly different and keep changing. And we get a nice subtle boil here. And I was careful to match that to the original illustration so it wasn't too big or too small. So I sent this off to Adrian, and that's when I received some feedback. Now feedback about your work always hits you in the ego a bit, don't pretend it doesn't, but I find it often hits the hardest when you know the feedback is right. And I knew that I went a bit rogue here and it was a risk to add this ripping off arm. So the feedback was that the arm ripping off was just a bit too much and that a more calm, slower pace would suit the illustration better and maybe add some subtle waving to the hair. Now this took me about a morning to animate and it wasn't a complicated scene and I wasn't on a tight schedule. So that's why I sent the finished animation straight away. Now what I should have done is sent back the first pass with the blocking that we did and that would have saved a bit of time animating, but I didn't send an earlier version and that's on me. And I agreed with the feedback, the arm ripping off was a bit much. Now, I can't deny, I still find it very amusing and think it's very funny. The tone of the arm ripping off works for my portfolio and you know, my feed, but this would really stick out as pretty wacky and surreal on Adrian's. It just doesn't follow the rules of his universe. All of his characters still behave like they're people in the real world, even though they're so heavily stylized. So what you want to animate, what you think is cool, often isn't the best path for the most successful project. You need to consider what the client and other collaborators need, not just what would look sick on your showreel. Adrian was super apologetic as well. He is a saint and was a perfect collaborator throughout the whole process. Feedback is just part of the process. So here's how I address that. I got rid of these three layers, which is the arm, the hand and the stump because we don't need those. Over here is the arm and the hand. So I just dragged that out and copied some of these earlier keyframes. So this left arm would continue to be attached and then loop back up at the beginning. And then we also needed to slow down the animation. So let's make our timeline a lot more visible and we can drag out our work area here to maybe 10 seconds and let's stretch these layers out too. And I'm gonna open up all the keyframes in the timeline with control A and then press U to bring up all the keyframes. To stretch out an animation and make it slower or faster, what we can do is select them all, every one of our keyframes, and then find the keyframe on the furthest on the right or furthest on the left. On the right, it's this one here and I wanna press Alt on my keyboard, hold it in, and then just drag this out. And this just scales out that animation, so it will be slower. We can Alt click, 
and then drag it to the left. And that will happen much faster, but still keep the proportions of the easing. So that's a really handy tip if you need to retime something that has lots of keyframes. So now that it had a slower pace, I added the effect wave warp to the hair and set the wave speed pretty low to 0.4. So there's just a subtle wave throughout the hair throughout the whole thing. I also added some really subtle animation to the hand up here. I did that by pre-comping it and using the puppet pin tool and just pinch the thumb and the rest of the hand together a little bit. So there was a subtle clench when it reached its final stretch. At the very end, Adrienne sent me some color updates and that was really easy to change. I just had to go into Illustrator, find the layer that was colored in, select the fill and change it to the color we needed, resave that file and then alter some of the shape layer fields that we'd done in After Effects. And at the end, we ended up with a result that we're both happy with. Now I won't lie to you, I still think an arm being ripped off while doing a gentle stretch is pretty funny, but it doesn't make a better animation of Adrian's work just because I thought it was funny. I've made a short playlist of some related videos that I think you'll enjoy if you've made it this far. I'll see you in the next video and please consider subscribing if you'd like more of these videos every week. Thank you.